Peter, how is biochar different from regular charcoal? It's mainly in the temperature that it's charred at. Uh, normal, traditionally made, stinky fuel charcoal is made in slow burning, low temperature charcoal kilns which burn at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the fire we're going to char this with is about 450 to 550 degrees centigrade. That's roughly seven or 800 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So you get a much cleaner pro uh, product and it has exactly the right microstructure for all the microorganisms in the water and the organic nutrients to glom onto. The idea when glom, you make glom onto, that's the technical glom term. Onto. You gotta remember that one. Yeah. The temperature in here should be about 550, 450 to 550 centigrade. The actual combustion temperature of the flame, which is outside of this, is 12 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect. Now what? Now, what we have here is the full can upside down so that the air is sealed off. It's not completely airtight so it won't hold pressure so there's no danger of an explosion. But it's tight enough so that the pyrolysis gases can escape from this inner tank into the combustion section but no oxygen can get back in at the end of the burn to uh, burn the charcoal. Now we're going to load up the kindling this initial burn, this first phase burn, is going to burn from the top down. We light it at the top, feed it air from the bottom, and it burns in a very thin, but very hot, and very clean combustion layer. And that's the heat that goes into the inner chamber and starts the charring process. As that charring process kicks in, the wood gases from inside the closed retort escape into this chamber here where the combustion is going on. Now the old-fashioned way of doing this which is to build a big mound, uh, cover it with mud or clay and uh, uh, restrict the airflow into it so it, that it burns very slow at a very low temperature. Just about the worst kind of pollution there is. A lot of long chain hydrocarbons, tars, ash, carbon soot, uh, it's really a nasty way to make charcoal. When we do it this way, where we separate the fire from the char feedstock, we get a clean, hot flame, which reduces uh, all of the volatiles to uh, a little bit of carbon dioxide and a lot of water vapor. The ideal concentration of biochar is about 8 or 10 percent uh, of soil mass. And that figures out to about 10 or 15 tons per acre, depending on how deep uh, you're trying to build your topsoil. We do this primarily as a demonstration uh, with the unit this size, although this unit would be pretty good for the small gardener with raised beds, flower pots, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, because the spaces are so small in this, it's a little bit difficult to squeeze a heat exchanger or a gas tap in here. But when we have a unit that's capable of taking a ton an hour, of dried feedstock, there's all kinds of opportunities to tap off flammable gases, heat from exhaust gas, we can put in water jacket heat exchangers, air heat exchangers, all kinds of things. And we're going to light it at several different places here because we want a nice even burn all the way around the top. Carbon accounting is a huge part of alternative uh, energy strategies and like everything else in this relatively new field uh, it needs a lot more development but uh, jo Dr. Uh, Johannes Lehman of Cornell University has recently published a book called uh, Biochar and Environmental Management which is a compendium of all the current scientific studies on biochar from its, from its, uh, from its chemistry to its economics and there are several studies in that book which touch on, on the carbon accounting and carbon uh, uh, economics of it. The biochar regime, the biochar system, is an effective and highly carbon negative uh, strategy, a way to sequester carbon in the ground essentially indefinitely by removing it from the natural carbon cycle. So what I'm going to do now is close the lid which will restrict uh, the air intake to these holes down at 
that are cut in the bottom of the outside container. And that draft will be helped by the stack effect of this chimney. You can see all the smoke coming out of there now. That's because there's not really enough draft going in there uh, to, per to burn those uh, gases efficiently. But when I put this stack on, it creates a siphon effect, drawing air in the air holes, mixing it turbulently and efficiently with those gases. And in uh, a minute or two, the flue gases up here will begin to get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner until everything comes into balance and we're getting nothing out of the, the smokestack except absolutely the simplest compounds the fire is capable of producing, which is CO2 and water vapor. That's, that's the best illustration I can give you of the difference between a, a traditional smoky charcoal burn uh, and a modern gasifying burn. The only thing that happens now for the next, uh, that's visible for the next three or four hours is uh, it'll, it'll get hotter and hotter and it will go through a couple of phases where it produces more smoke than it does now. That's because uh, the wood that we put in that airtight charge still has a little moisture in it. It's got mm, 5, 10, 15 percent moisture in it and when that moisture is, starts to, to drive off that'll slow down the combustion a little bit and that'll make a little bit of smoke. We get by, past that stage in a couple of minutes, it gets back up to temperature so that, so that the uh, feedstock is gassing off pure combustible gases, primarily carbon monoxide and uh, methane, which then oxidize into CO2 and, and water vapor and we get a clean burn again. All right, here we are uh, with the uh, biochar unit three, three and a half hours later. Uh, the burn cycle is complete. It's cooled down. It's uh, Still warm, still warm to the touch out here in the Amazon jungle. The biochar has a microporous structure and it also chemically attracts organic molecules and water and tends to hold them in place to make them available for the, for the plants. It has to be soaked or saturated or inoculated with all of those elements before it goes in the ground, otherwise it'll be competing with the plants for the water, the microbes, uh, and the nutrients, and it will it can actually harm the plants if it goes on raw. So what we do is mix it with uh, soil or uh, a good active organic compost before it goes in the soil, so it soaks up its full complement of water and nutrients and microbes so that it can make those available immediately to the plants as soon as it's added to the soil. At, at uh, optimum concentrations, uh, your soil will ultimately be, after, after some time, uh, repeated applications of biochar, you want to work up to about 8 to 10 percent uh, by weight of the soil content being biochar. With the 30 pounds or so we, we have here, uh, you would add this to maybe three or 400 pounds of soil which is not going to be a huge area. It's going to be a small patch of a, uh, a small patch of a garden, some 30 or 40 square feet. We need to scale up from the uh, 30 pound at a time batches. So uh, my company, New England Biochar, has recently acquired the American rights to a retort design that was uh, developed by a German engineer uh, working in uh, Burundi, Niger, India, uh, and Peru, uh, Mr. Christoph Adam, who has designed the Adam retort, based on the same simple technology uh, as this char was produced, but in batches of seven or eight hundred pounds at a time. That's seven or eight hundred pounds of uh, char produced with essentially the same effort and essentially in the same cycle time as this as this uh, three or four hour batch. Oh.